guys. Jules here. I am doing an amazing live today, so stay tuned. But I first wanted to mention that, holy shit, my daughter's dad today, we got in a small argument this morning. He left the house and he got in a very bad car accident. So I just wanted to, first off, remind everyone that life is fragile and he's fine. He has like some soreness. His car is totally smashed. And I just realized that, you know, you can't say hateful things to someone ever. Like you should never, um, you should always be loving, thankful, grateful, and respectful Anyway, I'm on here today because I am going to be going live with someone who has really truly inspired me, out of this world inspired me. Um, it is Mimi Kirk. Uh, she is, she's been on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Um, she has written, she's a best-selling author of seven different books. Uh, she's a raw vegan. Well, she was a raw vegan for over a decade. Loves raw food. Eats some cooked now, but she's a raw vegan sister. Um, and she's a raw food chef, a coach, a mother of four children. Just an overall extreme inspiration. So I am going to bring her on now and meet her for the very first time and just ask her some questions about her life. We did Hi, it. it's so, <laughs> yes, <laughs> learning curve have, for me you know, this year. I have a, a little technology in me. <laughs> You're amazing. I'm so blessed and honored to be here with you today. You are the most beautiful 83-year-old I have ever seen in my life, and I am just so ecstatic to get to spend some time with you today. I'm excited to be with you, too. Am I in your car with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're in my car with me today. Let's go um, for a ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I live, I live actually on top of a mountain. Uh, it's really beautiful. I live out here in North Carolina oh. on top of a mountain, and it, I don't have any service up there, so... <laughs> I'm down here. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I could probably be outside, but I get I get a little nervous about the technology. I want my phone plugged in. I don't want to lose you. So well, I'm here, and we're together now. So that's perfect. Yay! Well, I'm Jules, and I have been a raw vegan off and on for four years. And I'm raising a raw vegan toddler. Great. I love hearing that. It's so funny. Yeah. We always worry about our health. You know, how are we getting our protein? Are we gonna, well, here I am, 83. I've been a vegetarian uh, when I was 30 for the animals, didn't think about health, and then a vegan. As soon as I learned that being a vegetarian wasn't, I needed to up that a little bit stop wearing leather and eating right and then a raw vegan later in life and you know i've never had a protein problem i'm here healthy energetic well, i just got back from a five mile walk i do that five days a week and i'm here to say it's great and i did raise my kids that way as well they're now not all that way i have four of them two are are pretty much vegan and and one vegan raw and my sons eat a little other things once in a while but everyone's a healthy eater and you know, I really feel like my kids grew up very healthy. So I think it's great that you're doing this right away with your baby. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I I had to reverse some bad eating patterns. I used raw food to heal from everything uh, that I was going through in my earlier years. And then I just thought, like, why not start my daughter off? You know, this can be all she knows. And then... If she wants to branch out, of course, you know, that's probably going to happen. So 
she's only two right now, so she doesn't get the choice yet. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people have raised their kids raw vegan and they're very healthy and they love the food. They've turned their friends onto it and, you know, it, it's a lifestyle choice. And, you know, many, many young people, they are asking their parents, they want to be vegan because they don't want to eat animals anymore. They really were concerned about the planet and animals. And they ask their parents, and I get parents asking me all the time, is it healthy? You know, I don't want to do this because I think they're, you know, our kids will say they're making me eat what they buy. They won't feed me this way. So it's really a very interesting change that's happening in the world now. First of all, you can find vegan food anywhere. You can find raw vegan food in markets. Uh, you know, I know I'm li I live on the West Coast. It's everywhere in California. I mean, there are markets dedicated to vegan and raw foods and uh, raw cheeses. I mean, you don't even have to know how to make it anymore, although it's always better when you do. But there's so many things on the market now. It's very easy to transition into a raw diet. Let's say you have a green juice every day in the morning and you fix yourself a big salad for lunch. You're halfway there, you know, and you have a fruit in between. That's not a hard thing for anybody to do. And then if you want to eat a cooked vegan meal at dinner, that's easy, very easy to do. So um, I, I don't think it's a hard lifestyle to change over to. Uh, it's a mindset. And there's a lot of things that go along with it. First of all, if you don't have your health when at your my age, you're really limited on what you're going to do. You don't even feel like doing anything. I'm painting now. I have a new career aside from being a raw food chef. I'm painting in my 80s. And this is just amazing to me because I would have never thought in my early years that in my 80s I would be as active as I am because I didn't see any models like that. I didn't see anybody like me now and at that time. The people were saying, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s, I'm 65, I'm old now, so I'll just go along with what's handed me. And I'm just, I don't feel any different than you, you know? I feel, yeah. I feel alive and energetic and I can start new projects and I just feel really great. So I think food diet is a mainstay, a big thing. Of course, there's more things. You do need to exercise, that's important. I didn't like it earlier on in life and it wasn't my favorite thing and now I love it. I love Pilates and I walk every day, that's big. If you do nothing else, walking is easy, inexpensive exercise and you're out in nature, which is great. The other thing is thinking positive, very important, is you know what you think, and have self-confidence in the way you look. I have lines on my face, I'm 83, so what? I'm letting my hair grow out. That's not who I am, this physical appearance, it's who I am here inside, and what I feel inside. And I think we have to start loving ourselves and stop worrying. I mean, you wanna look your best, but stop worrying about every little thing that changes. We are going to age. The reason having a good diet is to slow down the aging process. So that's really important. Absolutely. So yeah, I want to say that, you know, to encourage people, I wrote seven books in my 70s. So you want to write a book? Why worry how old you are? Just go do it. Do the things that you feel like you want to do, the things you've been holding on to. Just give it a whirl, you know, start doing the things you love to do that make you happy. Start being around people who support you in everything you do and not people who uh, try to make you change or be different or whatever. I think that's a very important thing. Get rid of that stuff in your life that doesn't make you feel good. And that includes people around you, you know. And I, I'm a big uh, advocate for women and women supporting women. Uh, it always wasn't like that before. But now we know our sisters, you know, you've got to support the women and help them lift them up to what they want to do and not try to compete or anything else. I think it's very important in life that we, you know, kind of gather around each other and being kind to people. That's a very important thing. You know, I, on my walk, I pass homeless people and I say good morning or, you know, I'm not worried about anything I, as I'm walking. I just want to be nice to people and smile and, you know, show some compassion. And I think that really adds to who you are. You know, you become person by how you treat other people in life and uh, absolutely and and not only food can food can be toxic to you but also people can be toxic to you and so you definitely need the support and the love and that's everything and that's why I do this that's why I reached out to you because I need to stay connected with those that 
have been living this lifestyle that live by it and that know it and that understand me and why I'm choosing it. Because when I talk with people like you, I'm like reinvigorated and so excited about it. And another thing is when a couple, like several years ago, when I was figuring out what I wanted to do, I worked as a receptionist on the beach in Florida. And um, oftentimes, older, a lot of, the clientele was all mainly older people. And sometimes people would come in and they didn't know, they didn't know what was going on. You know, they were really lost and confused. They had progressed dementia. And then people the same age would come in and they would be so sharp. And I really noticed that it's your choices. I mean, of course, like you said, it's genetics. It's your people you surround. There's other factors, like you said, exercise. But I noticed such a shocking difference. Like there was a 90-year-old man. He came in. He was so much sharper than some of the 60-year-olds that came in. And I just realized it's a choice. It's a choice. Well, it and is you have I, I totally agree. It's your mindset. It's a choice. It's all energy. And it's true that some people get diseases early on. They can't do anything about that. They have to maintain. Or, but it's still a choice of how you handle it. Things happen to us for a reason. So you can be positive even though you have something. And it could be even debilitating. But you still can look at the light side and what's positive in your life. And that's when you know you need to surround yourself with people who are like-minded. You know, I think one of the issues is that makes it difficult for people transitioning is they're afraid what other, other people are going to say. If I go out to dinner with my friends and I just eat a salad, what are they going to say? Well, nothing. Don't let it bother you. You have to brush up. Don't try to convince people to do anything different. Don't try to... I can sit down with people at a dinner table and they're eating a steak and I don't say, oh my God, how can you eat that? I just eat what I'm eating. And then they look and they see what I'm eating and they see I'm healthy. And at some point, maybe they'll catch on and do it. But I don't try to uh, talk people into changing because I think that doesn't work. Even your mate, it just doesn't work. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it for yourself in a loving way. And I think that's really important as you're transitioning. And you know, yeah. you don't have to be hard on yourself. Like, I now eat some cooked vegan food. I think processed food is not good. That's something to stay away from. I do believe the raw food diet is the best. I feel amazing. And, you know, my, my digestion is great, much better than when I'm eating something cooked. But I do eat cooked food. I think whatever is on your plate, you have to really look at it with a blessing and good vibes. Don't eat something and then yes. be sorry you ate it. Don't look at that slice of pizza and beat yourself up. You know, enjoy what you're doing and then get back to your way that you know you're healthy. If you do yeah. that for a while, if you eat really healthy for a couple of weeks and then you eat something that's not so healthy, you're going to feel it so fast and your body will start telling you, oh, maybe I shouldn't eat that next time. Your body will really give you the messages of what you need to do. So as you know, it's, it, you have to change the way you prepare food. It's really a, you know, a process and, I've got seven books out. I really highly recommend them because they really help people make a transition. Right now on my Instagram, uh, for my social media, uh, even on Facebook, I'm running a three-book bundle that you can buy three books that I've bundled together that would normally be $75. I'm, sent, I'm selling it for $37.50 shipped in the U.S. So if you're looking for that, go to my Instagram page, Mimi Kirk Young on Raw Food and you can buy this bundle of books. Now, here are recipes that you can start to learn something new. You want to make a lasagna? I make an amazing raw lasagna instead of eating the I bet. pasta lasagna. It's an amazing recipe. It's a standby recipe, a Caesar salad. That's a dinner for somebody. If they learn to cook that at least once a week, they're giving themselves something better than eating the regular stuff. So I would highly recommend, I'm very proud of my books because they really change people's lives. They're easy to follow, uh, tells my life stories in them. And I think they're very inspiring. And I think the recipes are